I'm not sure how many of us would say becoming a software engineer was their dream. For Joel Hernandez, it was very clear that this is what he wanted to become. Joel came to New York City, starting off as a dishwasher, not knowing any English, but ready to take on any challenges that came his way. He used whatever money he had to learn English and get his associate's degree in computer science. He was ready to start applying to jobs, but nothing hit. Rejection after rejection, unable to figure out why he wasn't getting an offer, eventually Joel stopped looking. On top of that, life just threw him curveballs. Joel got married, got a kid, and now needed to support his family. Unfortunately, having a dream is one thing, but life and the unexpected things that come with it happens. He got a job as a restaurant manager, made decent money, and had health insurance, so he gave up on his dream to become a software engineer. He always had the itch to get back into software development, but it wasn't until the pandemic hit when he lost his job that he finally went all in to start again. Join me in my conversation with Joel on how he did it. This is Outside the Code with your host, Tech Rally. Hey, Joel. Welcome to Outside the Code. How are you doing? I'm doing great so far. Thank you so much for yeah. being here. It's an honor to be here, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's so interesting because when I announced this podcast and this episode, that I, episode series that I want to do, a lot of people were expecting, I don't know, some like maybe famous Twitter people and all of that. But in my head, I really feel that there are a lot of people outside of this celebrityness or the social media that's just putting in the work, putting in the effort. And you're someone that I've personally worked with one on one for maybe the past six, seven months. And I know the type of work you've done. So just really want to share your story, share what it's like outside of the code and all of that. But before we just kind of dig into all of the fun stuff we went through for the past six, seven months, uh, do you just want to give like a gentle introduction about yourself? Yeah, for sure. So uh, my name is Joel Hernandez. Uh, I'm coming from a small island called Dominican Republic. I came here to New York, uh, New York City on, back in 2014. So it has been pretty much eight years being here. So I would say that I'm mixed, self-top developer, and also I went to college. But I consider myself like more like a self-top developer because what I'm currently doing right now, I learned by myself and, of course, by you, some of the tips. <laughs> uh, I have been working this company that I was hired since uh, a month so far. I'm currently working as a front-end developer. I'm very glad to be here. It's funny because uh, I was watching all your content like a year ago when I started following you. And every time there was a story, I was like, I, I want to be one of those guys one day, and here I am. So very, very happy to be here, to be honest. Yeah, it's crazy because what you're referring to were episodes that I started back in last year called Sharing Developer Stories. And there's definitely going to be some similarities uh, with Outside the Code, but uh, I think more focused on getting more in depth with the people I talked to. I think last year I was just trying to get as many people as I can, even though I didn't know them too well. But uh, moving forward with this podcast episodes, I want to interview people I kind of know on a little bit of a deeper level. That way I could ask them more uh, like underneath the questions, not a, not so much of this high level stuff. So I'm super excited about that. And Joel, you're the perfect person to talk to because I've worked with you for almost <laughs> six, seven. I don't know anybody I've worked with outside of my actual job as much as as much as I did with you. So this is gonna be super fun. I'm really excited about this one. But before you became a front end developer, before you started learning how to code, what were you doing before? Well, my journey is pretty, it's pretty interesting. It's a long journey, to be honest. It's, I don't know, I don't know if I'm the perfect person, but it took me like 13, 12 to 13 years to get my first job. I mean, to get my dream, the dream that I'm have right now. It took me very long. So, first of all, I was uh, before I come to New York, I was um, a regular guy just going to college for computer science trying to get my degree then i came here to united states i was i couldn't finish my degree over there so i came here and it was funny though when i came here i was not able to speak any english at all any english at all so i came here being uh, i was 23 years old so 
but I wanted to pursue my dream. That was my dream since I was, I don't know, eight years old, because I used to follow my, uh, my home model that was my uncle. So I remember my uncle going to college and I was like, I want to be like he, he was a computer programmer too. And I wanted to pursue that career. So since I was a kid, I knew what I wanted to do. However, you know, I came here knowing any English. So, and then I started working as a dishwasher in a restaurant when I was 23 years old. Then by working in a restaurant, being a dishwasher, I remember that I took my first uh, paycheck. I remember it was like $200. It was back in 2014. And I said, you know, I need to invest that money on, on learning English. So I went to a, a small uh, school and started learning English like for two years there. Then I decided to go to college. And then I spent like three years going to an associate degree. Then I got my degree back on 2018. And then boom, I finished my degree. And then I wanted to start working as a software engineer. But it was uh, funny, though, because when I started like applying to jobs, when I see all those requirements that they require, oh, you need to know that, you need to know c -sharp, you need to know Java, you need to have two years of experience, you need to know that. I was scared. <laughs> I was totally mm -hmm. scared, and I stopped. I stopped looking for you. I said, you know what? I, I'm not going to be able to finish. I'm not going to be able to learn, to know all of these that they asked me to, to, to know, and I will never be able to pursue my career. And then I give up at that time. And I remember that I was unhappy all that time because I wanted to get my dream. I mean, uh, think about it. I was, since I was seven years old, I wanted to get this dream done. And then, you know, family came. I got a baby back in 2018. I started like, okay, now is the time to start to, to find a job and start again learning, drop again. I was giving up many, many times until the pandemic hit 2020. And I was, I was fired from, my, from the restaurant I was working on, and that woke me up. I like said, you know, I was wasting my time all this time. 13 years since I started on college in 29, 2020, yeah, 2009, and it was 2020, I was not able to get my job. And it was funny because I was looking for, I mean, through YouTube to find any tips, and I found Joe Santos. I found Joe Santos, one of his first videos talking about this. And I said, you know what? The guy motivated me a lot. And I started, like, again, learning JavaScript from the scratch. And then I found you, and here I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lots to unpack there. Uh, when you yeah. graduated, or when you finished your associate, did you finish your associate's degree? Yeah, I did. Right, right. So after you finished, what, what, why was this so daunting? Did you apply to jobs and you just weren't getting responses? What, what was that like at that point in time? I think I have imposter syndrome very high. I must still have mm. some imposter syndrome still working on it. But what stopped me was that because I was through this uh, uh, application and I see that, oh, you need to know this. You need two years of experience. You need to know Java. You need to know... The, f the whole full stack. And I didn't mm -hmm. know those tips and tricks that, you know, sometimes just HR put those requests. And I didn't know that. Right. I was knowing any, I think one of my mistakes, I would say, is that I was knowing in, in any community. I was by myself. And here in New York, mm -hmm. in a lonely city by myself. I was not even communicating with any program and with anybody on the field. So I was by myself. And I don't know, I stopped. I stopped. By, I, 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 Trying to learn everything under the sun, I think that was my problem. I always mm -hmm. try to learn everything because I'm the type of person that like to be like 100% prepared. And mm -hmm. I applied like two or three times and then I said, you know what? Nobody spoke back to me. Nobody called me back and I just dropped. And then I, have a, then I got a baby and then everything changed. My whole life changed. I, you know, having a family in the beginning when you are like young, I would say, is kind of complicated. And, you know, support my family. And I try like support my family and also to work in a full-time job. Eight hours, nine hours, 10 hours is so hard. And mm -hmm. that in that loop, I just lost the motivation. Yeah. I mean, definitely you could get lost in the weeds of things, especially when you have a family, you have a child, you have to kind of be that breadwinner of the family and, you know, support your family. So, you know, much kudos to you. No 
no blame there because honestly i don't i don't know how i would try to balance everything out when all these things are just coming at me at once so just it is tough and i do acknowledge that and man it's it, i'm so impressed with your full full journey and we're gonna dive into it a little bit more obviously but when you made that decision to uh, i don't want to i can't do programming right now uh, you said you were doing like dishwashing, but I I think what later down the line you told me you're you're like a manager. So did you yeah. kind of go up the ladder in the restaurant business? Yeah, yeah. So I started first as a dishwasher. I spent like two years, I remember, 2014, 2015. And back in 2016, you know, I started learning English. I was able to communicate a little bit much better. And then my supervisor that was a great person. He's a Korean guy. He was amazing. And yeah, I'm uh, Korean too. Yeah, yeah, I know. I don't know. I, I, I said to my wife, I don't know. I have some connection with with the Korean guys. I don't know. I got I got a, a good vibe. Yeah, and actually, you remember a lot. You re, you remember me, uh, uh, him a lot. And oh, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and he was an amazing, an amazing person. And he was one of he told me. I remember that he always told me education first, even before your mm. job, even before everything. Education first. And he was very supportive. So I started even uh, working with him. He got me and he promoted me as a supervisor. He, I was his assistant. So then I spent mm-hmm. working with him like three years. Then he left the company and I got his position as a manager. So by that time, I was mm-hmm. very prepared. I know I knew everything because I was working uh, with him. So I learned everything. And then I got, and that I think that was another problem. I got comfortable. I would, I, I would not say that I was getting like a lot of money by any means. But I was getting like 60, you know, 60, 65. Mm-hmm. I was getting uh, insurance. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. I got my, I, I know everything on my job. I was comfortable. I have uh, Monday to Friday, weekends off. You know, my baby was growing up. And I said, you know what? If I go to another job, they're going to pay me less than this. So why do I have to bother and learn all this programming language and all of these things? So I, I'm Gucci, you know? And, and I said, yeah. you know what? And that is a, uh, Big big mistake when you get to your comfort with your comfort zone. That is a really mm-hmm. really a mistake that I made, and yeah, and then I ended up being a did, facility manager. Mm-hmm. And that rest. Did you ever yeah. have any itch? Did you have any itch to go back to coding during that time? Do you ever look back and was like, oh yeah. man, maybe I, all the time. Right now I should be coding. <laughs> all the time. That was a feeling that I have here all the time. Uh-huh. All the time. Right. Every time. It, even. There was a funny story. I think I don't know if I told you. I remember that I was uh, on the subway going to, to my work. And there was two guys uh, uh, wearing the GitHub uh, shirt. And they were talking about coding. And I was so, so sad because oh. even I cried. Even I cried, man. Even I cried, to be honest. I saw them. I said, I want, I, I, I want to be them. I want to be, and mm. I understood what they were talking. I said, and even the guy, <laughs> he, he didn't understand JavaScript, array, things like that, I remember. And I wanted to explain it to them, but, I, you know, he <laughs> in the subway, you know, kind of rude, you, you, you shouldn't be talking with anybody. So I just, right, okay. Right, right. And that was not, a, and, and every time I see young guys, uh, I mean, guys younger than me talking about code, I was so sad. And there was a, mm-hmm. a day that, no, not only a day, Many times that happened to me, you know, during work, I said, you know what? Do I have to spend my whole life doing this? My environment, my, my work environment was so, so toxic. I mm-hmm. said, do I have to, do, do I want to be working here all my time? I want to retire from here and not get my dream. What about if I die tomorrow? I'm going to, I mean, I'm going to die very sad because I was not able to catch my dream. And that was like a feeling mm-hmm. here. Like, I don't know, it was like burning me out. I don't know. And I say, I mm-hmm. want to code because I love coding. And mm-hmm. every time I go back, I spend like two months, then I drop. And that was my problem. Mm-hmm. Until I say, you know what? I'm going now. I'm going to get it. Or I'm going to get it. I, I, don't, I don't mind how, how much I'm going to fail, but I will get it. So when did you make that decision to say, you know what? I, I failed. I started, restarted back. I failed. I restarted back. But this time... I'm not going to give up. Like, what year was that? Was it because you got let go that you decided yeah. to make that decision? Like, what was that transition? Because yeah. I know you were working full time again after, during that time as well. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, um, back in 2020, again, pandemic hit. I, I, I'm not going to say that thing to Kobe, 
But uh, mm -hmm. it was a positive thing <laughs> that I got from Kobe. Yeah, that, that, that sure. woke me up. So that was a day, okay, I got this call. We said we were sent to home or stay there. We're going to call you back. I don't know how it's going to be, but we're going to call you back to, to come back to work. And then one day they call me in the morning. You know what? Sorry, but you guys are fired. Uh, you're no longer with us. And, you know, I ended up in the, uh, nowhere. I said, you know what? I have a family. How am I going to support my family now? Mm. I know I have some saving, but that savings is going to last like six months. And I was so worried, like every single day, I'm going to support my family now, you know? And one day I was uh, like reflecting on myself and looking at the mirror. I said, you know what? I'm still young. I have, about that time I was 28 years old. All my time, I wanted to be a programmer. That has been my dream since I was a kid. Why am I achieving that? You know, that was my, mm. that was a day that I have for myself in a long time because always I have to give my time to my family, to, you know, to my son. And then that was a day for me. You have to go to work. Yeah. Yeah. That was a day for me. I said, you know what? This is what I love. It's what I really enjoy. I enjoy talking about computer. I enjoy talking about code. I have been coding many programming language, but I never like pursue my career. And I need to get this done. And then I start like surfing on YouTube. How can I start learning JavaScript? <laughs> how can I go and be a, how can I find a job? as a software developer. That was my search, now I remember. And then the first guy that came up was Joe Santos, Coding Face. And I started watching mm -hmm. his YouTube. I was not working, so I didn't have nothing to do. So I was watching his content <laughs> like whole day. And then he, that guy motivated me a lot. And then I started mm -hmm. creating like a schedule, like two hours every single day, three hours every single day. And I did that for two years in a row. Two hours every single day three. at least. Two three to three years. hours for almost three years, since 2020 until uh, January 22 mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Every single day, even on weekends. And that, and then I think what helped me a lot is that I start following YouTube, following you, following mm -hmm. Coding Face, Danny Thompson, all those guys. That was like my community. So when I start mm -hmm. like joining Discord channels, like your Discord channel and, and all the YouTubers that in watching uh, content every single day, that was like my community to go. That was like mm -hmm. even the people, even though that was virtually on YouTube, but they were motivating me a lot. Yeah. I know people are going to be like two hours every single day. Did you really do that? But I know for a fact how disciplined you are. So when you say you did two <laughs> hours a day, I know you did two hours a day because it's just, it's so easy to say, oh, you know, I, I work out every day or I work out, you know, like everything every day. But sometimes you give up. You give up on the Saturdays or the Sundays, you know, you take a break. But for when you say that, I know for a fact how consistent you are, especially because you're so when you're hyper focused, I notice that you don't really give up like and you'll re you'll go exhaust all resources to figure it out. So that's I'm so happy that you kind of made that decision to really persist and all that. But at the same time, at what point were you like, something's not working, right? Um, yeah. I think maybe year one, did you start thinking about that? Year two, did you, did you start thinking about that? At what point were you like, I know I'm putting in the work, but at the same time, I still don't have a job as a software developer. Uh, I could do like my side projects. I could work as a freelancer, but actually maybe being like, employed officially or whatever why isn't that happening so when did you start kind of feeling that sure so again i started like coding every single day two hours and then i decide to follow with pretty much like all the youtubers says i mean famous youtuber mm -hmm. like getting your portfolio done get your projects done but the funny thing is that <clears throat> i wanted to get my portfolio done but like i said i just had two hours basically two or three hours mm -hmm. that's it because i I get up like at 6 a.m. and by 8 a.m. I need to finish, draw my kid to school, and then go to work and come back at 6 or 7 p.m. No energy at all. So I just got three hours or two hours every single day. So I need to invest uh, wisely at that time. But there was a point that I was trying to get my project, my portfolio, but it was taking me too much time. And then I started seeing guys from LinkedIn, from uh even YouTube's uh, story that they were getting their job in six, eight months and say, well, I'm not getting my job in six months. I've been doing this for a year and a half and nothing <laughs> happened. What's going on? So I, I have to do something uh, wrong. 
And again, my angel king, I call you my angel. And guys, it's gonna, it is no promotion by any means, but I always, <laughs> I always be thankful because I found you. So I remember that day I was uh, even doing laundry and I was watching an amazing interview. It's when I know you. I mean, uh, was Joe Santos and you, the amazing interview. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. I think it was the first interview that you guys got together. And then there was a part of the interview that he asked you, uh, what do you see, guys? I mean, the question, I don't remember the exact question, but I know it was like something uh, related that not only know how to code is uh, enough. You need to do something else. And then you start uh, uh, saying that first you need to get your portfolio, your projects, but you don't have to get all your projects, like three or four projects, like everybody say. One project should be enough a solid project, and then you start, you need to do your resume. And say, oh, I don't have that. You need to do a good resume. And say, you know what, I don't have that. You need to <laughs> do LinkedIn, a good picture, and start um, approaching company, messaging people, messaging recruiters, say, you know what, this is what I'm missing. And then I say, I need to find a mentor because I'm doing anything. I know how to code at that point. Mm-hmm. And but I, I was not like finding the right path to get my job. And then it's when I start following you after that interview. Mm-hmm. And then in one of your uh, videos, you said that you were doing one-on-one. You were starting at that time, at the beginning. And right. you said, right. you know what, I need in this. Well, it might be very expensive. <laughs> and then I did, <laughs> no, not at the beginning because I didn't know the price. And then I uh-huh. remember that I watched one of your, your videos and go to the description and found the calendar link. And then it's when I uh, scheduled the first interview that I had with you. And then after that, yeah. everything changed. What I was not achieving <laughs> in two years, I was able to achieve it in, at the, I mean, at least getting uh, interviews after I started with you, like uh, after three months, I believe, or even before, because mm. first we were trying to get our portfolio done, the project. And then there was mm-hmm. a point that you told me, you know what? You are ready. You can, don't finish your project, focus on interviews. Yeah. 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 I mean, I do have to admit uh, to the whoever is listening, Joel, you know, they say early bird gets the worm. So I would say that you are an early bird. You got the early bird uh, tech rally special for the one on one coaching, <laughs> because uh, I think when I think our price is fifty dollars an hour and I've upped yeah. my price to a hundred something or like a hundred dollars. And this not because I'm just that much better now since six months ago, but it's uh, there's a lot more demand. I'm a lot busier now. But at that time, you know, I had the capacity to help you. And I was also unsure if, you know, the, my certain strategies were going to work for everybody because I had some previous clients that I did it for free. So maybe there were even earlier bird specials that I, I helped them get jobs. But every, everybody's situation is a little bit different. And I'm just glad we met at the right time because, yeah, there was just so much... I don't know, man. Well, I don't even know how to describe this, but yeah, it's just crazy how you watched my interview with Joel, and then that led you to want to do like a one-on-one call and all of that stuff. But what were you expecting when you signed up and were, and you you joined the call? What what did you, did you have, did you have any expectations? Were you like, is this guy scamming me, or no, what, what was the situation I- like? At that point, I don't know, like I said, at that point, I was watching all your content. I was up to date. I watched like mm-hmm. every single day, two or three of your videos. So I was like up to date. I was so a lot my, more active. <laughs> so uh, at that time, uh, I knew that you were the right person. And mm-hmm. at that time, also, you got your job from Amazon, I remember. It was like two or three months. Oh, okay. That you got your... So and, and I... I was watching your, your video that you were coding, so I know that you were a, a, a good coder and you have experience. I said, you know what? I need somebody from the field, somebody that has experience. Mm-hmm. And then there was a, a mm-hmm. good thing that your background um, is not a traditional background. Mm-hmm. So you were mm-hmm. like coming from engineering, electrical engineering, and then you went to mm-hmm. bootcamp. So you, you had that self-taught uh, uh, mind, I would say. You know, you got the route. And then, mm-hmm. you know what? I think... I resonate with him. I like how to talk, how he talks. I know, I know his content. And to be honest, I just wanted to get advice because, mm. and I, I mean, I wanted to, I wanted to be able at that time to get to the right path and explain you what I was doing, 
and see if I was doing right, if I was uh, going to be able to uh, uh, get my dream, get my job. I think mm-hmm. that was the first mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's so crazy, right? Because, man, the, the thing is, you don't really know what to expect in these first meetings. But after the first one, you're what compelled you to be like, oh, I need to talk to Alex again the second time, the third? Because we've, 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 we've had multiple meetings. It yeah. wasn't just like a one meeting kind of thing. But what type of, what type of advice did I give you that made you want to come back? Because sometimes I told you, don't do this. And you're like, yeah. are you sure? I'm like, I'm pretty <laughs> sure you shouldn't do yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you trusted me, right? But at the same time, it's like, it's a pretty big decision not to do this or focus on this. And I tell you 90% on this and 10% on this. Uh, you kind of followed it to a T, which, you know, luckily it worked out. But was there at one point where you just said, hmm, I don't know if this advice that Alex is giving me is actually useful. <laughs> no, I mean, I really like, even for the first time, because you point me to the right direction right away. You told me, you know, mm. you are doing this wrong. And I know I was doing it wrong. That is the funny thing. But I wanted somebody to validate that. I'm suffering <laughs> me to validate that I was doing something wrong. But at the same time... I, just say, I, don't, I don't think I said wrong. I don't think I no, said wrong. No. I said, I think, I think, I just, I just said, I think you're doing a lot. I think you're yeah, doing too yeah, much. Yeah, yeah that's, no, what, I think that's me, what I said. I remember what you told me was, um, you got the skills. I remember that you got the mm-hmm. skills. What you need to work now is how to get the job. You need to put uh, mm. many things together, get your portfolio, get your project done, and start getting interviews, like preparing for front-end interviews, like behavioral interview, mm-hmm. uh, question interviews, and algos and things like that. But the good thing is, I remember that was on June, I think, June, July, right? And mm-hmm. I started following your, uh, your advice right away because... I got, I don't know, I trust you since the beginning. I don't know, it's a weird feeling. <laughs> but it was good, though, because since I, since I uh, follow all your direction, I was able to get this. You know, without you, I wouldn't be here, to be honest. And right. I started getting results right away. I started seeing mm. people messaging me back, recruiters. I mean, it was like, you were like a wise guy that said, you know what, once you start doing this, you're going to get this. And I was getting this right away. So, yeah, and I got the need to to, to keep uh, talking with you and get more advice and see how I'm doing, and I start seeing results right away. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate. It. I'm glad it worked out. And some of the advice I I would have to say it's very like publicly. I don't know if I could give that advice to everybody, but that's why sometimes these like one on ones are are necessary because everyone's situation is going to be a little bit different. And for you, I really felt, I think one advice I'll just say that, that I'll say it out there because, you know, every person is going to be case by case. But I think one thing I told you to do is uh, not focus on your portfolio as much and just start building your projects and start applying, like get to the interview as fast as possible. Because the stuff that you were telling me, I thought it was pretty impressive that you were able to build something out in Next.js, that you were able to use the JavaScript and you knew your CSS, you knew your stuff. It's just that. We didn't put you in a nice wrapped present with a nice bow tie, which is like the resume, the LinkedIn, the interview prep and all of that stuff. We, You're still focused on this tutorial mode. And yeah. there was always this self-doubt that, hey, I'm never going to be good enough for these uh, jobs. So I'm going to keep learning and learning and learning and learning. But you might fall into this trap of, again, being in tutorial hell, learning for another two, three years. And you're just constantly chasing the new technology because that that's, that's how the job descriptions were open. Yeah, that was my big problem. That was my my first big big problem. That I wanted to learn everything. I wanted to mm-hmm. know how to work in PHP, C sharp, JavaScript, C plus yeah. plus. because I, I I on my back of my mind I I was thinking if I don't know that I'm not gonna get my job. Mm. But the good thing all also was that. I had somebody that trusted me. I think that mm. was now that I now now that I think about it. I think that was the main thing that kept me coming back to you, that you trusted me, and I didn't have anybody mm. on this. I mean, on soft on this field that tell me, hey, you can do this. You, you you got this. You know, I needed somebody to tell me, hey, you got the skills. Do this. I never had anybody like that. So having somebody That's, that trusted me pushed me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 
no sometimes i feel like the one-on-one coaching is less about tangible things to do but more about this emotional support and just validation that hey the struggle is okay <laughs> keep going keep going you got this this is not this is very normal for everyone to feel this way but just continue on your path you got this you'll figure it out but if you're just kind of on your own and just not really talking to anyone about it or validating these feelings it's always going to be a rough ride and i could only assume that there was a lot more pressure from family and all this stuff to support so you start self-doubting yourself like maybe i should just go back to what i was doing before work as a manager you know get paid well and just you know support the family but uh, if you have those support structure around you, then definitely um, I feel that will keep you going. And I, I know that you were going all the time. So <laughs> really impressive. Yeah, for um, sure. So yeah, but, yeah when, when you always need somebody that pulls you. Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if it's like a mentor for software engineer or even a family. Mm -hmm. But also exactly. what I like from you was that you were uh, transparent with me. I mean, when I was, when I was not doing something... <laughs> Uh, okay, you told me, hey, you need to change this. Even when you told me, mm -hmm. hey, you need to change the way you are writing email, that was very helpful to me too. So mm -hmm. having somebody that is transparent, not always tell you, hey, you are doing good, you're doing great, you know, but, only, but also tell you, hey, you are doing this bad, you need to change this, you know. If you mm -hmm. want to get this, you need to change this. So very important. <laughs> So funny. I'm just thinking about it now that like even the non coding stuff I was telling you to do and not do. Because one thing, remember, I always said, like, Joel, when you're having a conversation with someone through the interview like this, I noticed that you keep moving <laughs> like this. Yeah. And I was like, Joel, you got to like calm down <laughs> when, you, when you get to the interviews. <laughs> you got to like look how, look how relaxed you are now, you know. But yeah. before, I remember when you when you were like talking to me about stuff, you keep going up and down up and down up and down i was yeah. like joel this one thing that you need to fix <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it was just these subtle things that can make a big difference and another thing was uh just don't shoot yourself in the foot remember because yeah. there's always that self-doubt self-creep of hey can i actually do this can i am when they ask me do i know this technology i'll be like oh no i don't know this technology but remember how i told you that you got to spin the narrative and say even though i don't know this i do know this and i can learn this new technology right it's just these subtle things make such a big difference and i could already see the way you interact with me now we're, we're kind of on this even level playing field as engineers now versus <laughs> you just kind of always asking me for advice i could i could i, could, I, I don't know the vibe is chill i like it <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you helped me to get to this point. I'm really, again, very happy to that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I do want to talk about the interview process a little bit. And I know we went through kind of the gauntlet of the interviews. But what did I tell you the first thing when we first kind of chatted about interviews? Did I tell you you should wait for your interviews or you should try to get your interviews as fast as possible? <laughs> no, I remember you told me uh, stop uh, getting because at that point, when I fix my LinkedIn, and mm -hmm. even you told me how to write my bullet points, and, and I remember that it was after you checked my resume. You said, you know, your resume looks good. Mm -hmm. Fix your LinkedIn. Even I fixed the picture that I got. And I spent like even two weeks like fixing my LinkedIn, and I started getting message from recruiter. And by that time, I remember you told me, you know what? Uh, now do 80 to 20 for now. Just focus on interviews. Mm -hmm. Try to get your interview as soon as possible. Because you are getting the recruiters, and then get your right get your because interview. you're because you're working on your project still at that time. Yeah, I was I was so focused on the project because I was thinking again. I mean, my um, I was thinking I need to have a project because I need to show something on my interview. If I don't have a project, I'm not gonna get the job. And mm. but you told me, you know what? Focus on the interview because you are getting the interviews. I mean, you're getting mm -hmm. recruiter. Uh, you're getting recruiter messaging you. And then I started mm -hmm. following the recruiters, and even I remember that you told me how to approach the recruiters, how to answer them. Um, and then I started following those directions, and I remember that I got my first interview, was a uh, in a technical phone screen, and I bumped it. I was not even prepared <laughs> at all. Like it was so hard for me. I was comfortable talking about technologies, but I was mm. not comfortable at all talking about myself. I didn't know how to sell myself. Mm -hmm. And mm. 
I remember the guy after five minutes, he said, you know what? I can call you back. Uh, I have a, a, I'm pretty busy today. I'm going to call you back to settle another interview. The guy never got back to me. <laughs> <laughs> and I started, you know, getting more interviews. And then you told me how to change uh, the thing that you say. Uh, you need to change how to, how to talk. You need to learn how to sell your, mm-hmm. your skills. And Mm -hmm. I started following that. And also I did my own research and I started learning first the behavior interview question. That was when I was lacking off. So I started learning behavior interview question. That was funny because like my interview process was so, so intense. It was like Mm -hmm. from October is when I was getting the most interviews until even January. It was so intense because I was preparing for behavior interview. I was preparing for mm-hmm. question, like back and back questions, technical questions. Then I was preparing for algorithms, and then I was preparing for mm-hmm. front end interview, like mm-hmm. uh, you know, like get this carousel done, things like that. So I was preparing for four type of interviews and, and having a family, and I was also working on my project. Was so, was so. And you had a full time job. And having a full time job, it was, and also my job was very demanding. I was, right. it was like eight hours, nine hours, but. I have so much on my plate during my job. But at that time, I was like not doing anything on on my job. I was like, you know what? I got these two hours. I got my job done pretty much. I'm going to just study. And then I try to find a a, a hitting spot and start like (laughs) studying. Yeah, but it was so so Uh intense because I got a a schedule like, okay, from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m., I need to study algo. On Mm -hmm. the subway, even on my phone, I still have like a, like a hundred plus behavior interview question, how to mm-hmm. answer the, using the star uh, methodology, things like that. And then when I got back mm-hmm. to home, again at night, I spent like from 10 p.m. to 12, just preparing for the next interview, for the next interview. And then I was getting, you remember, I was getting like back-to-back interviews. There was a point that mm-hmm, I moved right. from not knowing how to pass even the first round of the interview, which is the phone screen with the recruiter, and then I was mm-hmm. getting, oh, I'm getting now to the first interview to the hiring manager. Then I right. failed those, and then I was getting to the second round. Then I was getting right. 10. So it was a, a, a funny process, a, a enjoyable process, I would say, but it was so it was intense. It was not easy at all. Yeah. When you have a family, all these things to do, it was not easy at all. I was burning out. And thank God I found my Did job you... now. <laughs> <laughs> Did you feel ready when I told you you should start interviewing? No, not at all. I was I was following you like blind, but I was. But what, what did I tell you? Yeah. What yeah, did but... I tell you about the, the? Even though I even though I told you to go, what did I say? What should you expect? <laughs> you told me you should expect many. Uh, you're gonna fail. You're gonna fail very bad, <laughs> but you're gonna learn from your failure, and that was true. Right. I was learning. Right. It was learning, and I was even taking notes, and then I was reflecting myself. Mm-hmm. What did the answer? What was my answer? Did I answer something mm-hmm. wrong? And then I was reflecting, yes, I should say this. And, you know, and I was even after that, every time I got an interview, I call you back or even message you by uh, Discord mm-hmm, and things mm-hmm. like that. And then I was getting the technical part. Then I was comfortable with the behavior interview question. And then I was the technical mm-hmm. part. I think I was talking uh, more than what I was supposed mm-hmm. to talk. And then I was getting rejected because of that, probably. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we talked about that, too, where it's like oversharing versus yeah, it was uh, oversharing. just sharing just enough. Yeah, but I remember specifically, too. I mean, as much as you give me a lot of praise for the one on one stuff, I know how much work you did outside of our one on ones about the behavioral stuff and really studying and having those questions on your phone and practicing like I can't do that for you. Like I can only tell you to do those things and prepare for it. But ultimately, you did the research and you did figure it out. So I, I always want to just remind people that, you know, the person that you're working with can only do so much. Ultimately, it is on you to deliver. And that's what actually happened is you delivered. And I'm just so proud about the fact that, you know, like you take my advice, but you go above and beyond with it. Right. And that's the difference that I see successful developers versus people that are still kind of going through that that rut. Like you can say that, oh, I don't know the path or I don't know the direction to go. But if someone actually gives you the path and you don't take it, then I don't know what other excuses you can have to not yeah. do it, right? Maybe, yeah, so, but I still remember. Remember that time I said, 
All right, Joel. Surprise! I'm just gonna give you a technical interview. Oh my god! Yeah, I'm still. <laughs> I'm still Do you remember that? Of, yeah, I, I felt so bad. I was even ashamed to. I mean, ashamed with you. I say, he might be thinking right now that I'm that he's wasting his time. That was the worst feeling. Even it, I think that feeling was even worse than any interview that I felt because. You know, I was respecting that. I remember they have this uh, interview with leak apps, and then mm-hmm. they told me, "Hey, we're gonna uh, we're gonna give you in one day. We're gonna give you a design inter- I mean, I forgot the type of interview. I know there was mm-hmm. a coding interview in mm-hmm. Algos, doing front end mm-hmm. interview, the regular ones, and mm-hmm. I think it was like design part and things like that, and." You told me, I told you that I was exciting and say, they moved me to the second round and you told me, okay, so let's prepare for this interview. And okay, I was thinking like, it's going to be like <laughs> questions, like one-to-one, okay. And then I remember that was in the morning, you say, okay, do this. Man, it was a pretty simple thing, but I, I was not used, I mean, at that time, I was not like mm-hmm, doing mm-hmm. Uh, from an interview that heavily or oh, get this mm-hmm. API, call this API, just render out. And I couldn't. Mm-hmm. I f- mm-hmm. I frozen and I I even the thing I w- and then I was feeling so bad because, like I said, uh, I was thinking, you know what? He's on his mind. He's saying that I'm not good enough. I just <laughs> uh, I was thinking he's wasting his time with me. And you remember that I was so so feeling so bad that, that that day I couldn't even do anything. I couldn't <laughs> even even wrote a, a H one. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. But that prepared me. That was that was mm, my mm. that was my call Wake to action. Call. <laughs> yeah, my call yeah. to action. You know what? Now mm. you need to prepare for that. Mm, mm. Yeah. I, if yeah. anything, what I what I wanted you to get out of it was not necessarily <laughs> to think that I didn't believe in you. I just wanted you to first experience what it's like to feel that in a more comfortable setting. Uh, yeah. Hopefully it was a little more comfortable because you were doing it with me, but I wanted you to s- kind of experience something where it's like, holy crap, this is a lot of pressure. Even if the question is easy, I don't know what I'm doing because my mind is just racing at yeah. 120 miles per an hour. And the fact that my mind is racing means that I can't actually do the the code. But the code itself was really easy, right? Yeah, now it was that just you're calling an it. API. <laughs> right there, there, yeah. this it was so, so easy. that I was doing that all the time back, back because even my project mm-hmm. was pretty a pretty good mm-hmm. project. And it was a full stack application. And, and I said, you know, I did a full stack application. And now I not, can even like take an API and just render the list. <laughs> yeah, it was so funny. Right, right. But what's, I think one thing that you were able to learn from a lot of these rejections is I noticed that even though you're getting more and more disappointed, I could tell your 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 ability to accept it and just kind of get some thick skin during these interview process got you calmer. Like, if anything, your expectation of rejection made you calmer about the whole interview process. And that way, you're able to just solve the problem without any of the, oh my goodness, like, this is my interview. Like, what if they ask me this? What if they ask me that? You're just kind of, okay, I'm just going to try to Go in there, do the best I can. I prepared to the best of my abilities. I did the interview. I'm, I prepared the technical challenge. I did the front end prep. Let's see what happens, right? Like yeah. I feel like your mentality changed a lot from yeah, the after to the after end. that interview that we got together. I changed my mode. I, you know, I, I start like um, following from evil.com. I was. Uh, lucky that shout out to front end evil yeah shout out to front end evil i'm working (laughs) on it right now (laughs) yeah i joined that team (laughs) yeah anyways go ahead that helped me a lot and i I remember they found Mm -hmm. this like a medium block i found that and they start Mm -hmm. yeah i remember i was searching how to prepare for interviews much better like a front end interview and i found that link and i started doing Mm -hmm. all the projects and even what i did that that was a good practice that you told me uh to like Mm -hmm. set my timer like give you your, mm-hmm. yourself like 45 minutes and trying to solve it at that time. Focus on the logic mm-hmm. and forget about the styling. And then if you have time, just start doing your styling. That was a, an amazing. And that I think that's what got me the job because I got three rounds on my current company. They give they got me one like that. That was like a that was a moral to open on a moral, close it, like the same as a, as a from evil. And then I got an algo interview. But at that point I was 
very very uh, prepared for that because from evil mm -hmm. and then for mm -hmm. your advice yeah yeah it's just crazy <laughs> actually it's crazy that you discover front end eval before i discover front end eval and now i'm like helping them with their stuff and actually doing their like doing youtube videos on how to solve those problems actually helping me get better at front end development too because it's just how do i use vanilla javascript again and use uh react in these instances but uh yeah i know how much you prepared and i i feel like you just kind of had to go through it's kind of like a book book of joel horandis you know you went through <laughs> the, the studying and then you stopped programming and then you built projects and did you're in tutorial hell and then you started interviewing but then the interviews weren't going too well but eventually you got to a point where it just felt like like a pattern if anything it felt repetitive right the fact that you were able to just go okay i know what to say here i know what to say there and then move on to the next round and then i know what to say here i know how to do this there it's just that's why that's why i was so uh eager for you to push for interviews earlier than later because i just knew that it's so hard and unless you go through it yourself it's really hard for me to tell you what it's going to feel like right you have to kind of experience yeah. it for yourself yeah yeah, there was yeah. a time, I, I know that you remember that there was a time that I failed that interview that was here in New York, and I wanted mm -hmm. to get that job. And the funny mm -hmm. thing is, mm -hmm. even I got to the final round, and the guy told me that I was doing amazing. I got I got a goodbye from the hiring manager. There was two guys, I remember. He 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 was impressed because he got me mm -hmm. the challenge. Actually, it was two challenges. And he gave me an hour, and I was able to finish like in 40 minutes. Because of wrong evil, because I was practicing with this timer, so I got pretty good in like prototyping, get my thing done pre pretty easy. And then the guy, mm -hmm. he was even telling me the benefits, everything. I and I said, you know what? I got this job. This is mine. <laughs> and actually, and actually I, I messaged you, hey, Alex, I got the job. I think I got it. This is mine. <laughs> I was excited because of back of my mind, I had a goal uh, back on 2021 was to get my job that year. And then, mm -hmm. uh, then I was waiting for the email. I I I, I wait for one week and then I say, hey, to the recruiter, and what's going on? I actually, to hiring manager, hey, I'm still waiting for your email. They told me, you know what? I'm still waiting. We are gonna call you back. A month passed by, nobody called me, and then one day he just told me, hey, you know what? I'm sorry, we found somebody else that has a better uh, experience than you. I'm sorry. That was a pretty bad uh, feeling that I got. I think that was the worst feeling that I got from this interview process because I was I was like seeing myself on that job. Mm. And even mm. at that time I wanted to give up to be honest. I said, you know what, I'm just failing, yeah. failing, failing, not getting anything. I'm not gonna get to, to anywhere. And then it's when I called you, you told me this I mean the thing, I mean, don't take it personal. You are getting to the final round. It means that we are close. So just keep going. And then after that, that was interview, on a... uh -huh. After that interview is when I got my job. Yeah. Yeah. After I remember that. that one. I mean, people think that, you know, I only want to talk to people if they pay me money or something. But I remember specifically that was like a Saturday or a Sunday. And I was like, Joel, yeah. call me right now. <laughs> and we just talked for a good. I mean, as much as, you know, like I do this quote unquote coaching thing, I really consider you a really good friend and someone I've. I you know I had to know for the past six months, so of course I'm personally invested in you as well. But I was I remember because it was such a dark time at that moment, and I said, "Hey, dude, don't give up. We're so close." If you weren't getting interviews, or you only were getting one or two interviews, and it it didn't work out, then you know even then I would say don't give up. But you, I could smell the finish line. Like I could see it, <laughs> but maybe you're like, "Oh, I, maybe I should go back to." Because I think you asked me, like, should I just go back to my projects yeah. or something like that? Yeah, like, so you know what? I, I said, no, go don't go back to your project. projects. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, don't yeah. go back to your projects, please. Just trust me. <laughs> go and keep interviewing. And, uh, man, it's it's just crazy how things turn around. So, But now that, you know, you're on the other side, making some good money, you know, living that developer life. How is it? How does it, how does it feel to be on the other side? As it's, a developer, it's so different. It's so different. I'm so happy. I think that I think I told you this. I have never been that happy like right now. I'm so happy. Every single mm. day I'm smiling. I even don't remember working on my job that I was smiling at all. I was sad. I mean, I was unhappy all the time, sad. Uh -huh. uh, 
yeah, now I'm so happy. I'm very mm-hmm. glad that I got to this company because they really are a team-oriented company. They really value mm-hmm. you as an employee. And, mm-hmm. you know, I wanted to get to not, I wanted to get anywhere in a startup or anything, but I wanted to have like, have somebody like a coaching me because I didn't have, I know how to code, but I, you know, not in a professional level. So I, mm-hmm. and thank God this company right now is very good, team oriented. They are teaching me everything, but still, uh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. And, mm. uh, now I got the vibe, you know, working on my desk. Now I feel like, oh, you know, now I will say well, after 13 years, when 13 years, now I'm feeling like this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Yeah. I mean, I'm half, still have this grind on my mind. I want to get better every single day. I'm still investing my two mm-hmm. hours every single day, learning new technologies, you know, learning new things because I just want to get better and better. But I'm, now I'm doing mm-hmm. what I like. Now I'm doing what I love. Yeah. And, you know, I'm getting the money. Now I'm with my family because I'm working remotely. Uh, now I have my family close. I don't have to spend too much time uh, preparing for interviews. <laughs> and I'm so, so happy. I cannot tell you how happy I am right now. Yeah. And not only are you doing what you love, but you're getting paid for it, right? There, yeah. You could do what you love, but sometimes when you're not getting paid, it's like, what am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> am I wasting time? What's, what's going on here? So the fact that you're able to code for a living and get paid that's just a really great feeling it's a really great feeling and i know that a lot of people that are listening to us right now they could probably take a lot of notes from your journey but if you had to give people that are trying to get their first developer job some advice what would it be for sure so first don't give up don't give up on your dream Mm. uh I'm a guy that, like I said, spent 13 years to get my job done. I mean, to get my dream done. And I think one thing is not only knowing how to code is enough. You need to uh, do many strategies. You need to get your LinkedIn. You need to do your resume. Uh, try to get a good resume. Have somebody else to review your resume. Even from your Discord, I got so many good advice. When I send my resume to your Discord and then the guy who's like messaging me, change this and that. Also, do your projects. It's very important. Your portfolio side. And I think doing a, a project from scratch is very good. Right now, I'm getting my tickets done pretty quickly. I'm doing very good at my job because I think I got the mindset how to research when I'm knowing something, I don't know how to do it. And I think you have to First, have the right mindset to not give up, get your portfolio, get your resume, and have somebody like a mentor to help you out or a community at least. Mm-hmm. Because you need somebody else or a group of people that is vouching you of, or got the feeling of being in a community. And I think that was the mm-hmm. thing that I was missing back when I was uh, coding even before I met you. You need to have a community. Yeah. When you are working by yourself, it's, 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 it's not okay. I mean, you need you need a group of people that is doing what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. And, of course, never give up. I think that is... A, it sounds cliche, but it's, it's, it's inconsistency. Consistency yeah. is the key. I yeah. mean, I, the reality is, is it's the easiest thing to do is to give up, right? Because yeah. you just go, yeah. okay, I'm done, right? Like, I don't want to do this anymore. And then just play games, watch TV or whatever, right? But not giving up is so hard. But finding a community, like you said, and I'm actually very pleasantly surprised about my Discord community because, you know, sometimes I'm not the most active person. I try my best. I try to, you know, engage and keep the conversations going. But uh, I'm just very appreciative of the people that are in there. And honestly, I'm thankful for you too because I know you're answering questions when people ask. And I just feel that now that you're on the other side of actually being a developer, you're just giving so much knowledge. I'm like, do I even need to be here anymore? <laughs> I, got, I, got, I got Joel answering all of my all the questions. I don't even think I need to answer these questions. <laughs> but man, it's just so funny that we're kind of talking in this manner now. I don't, I don't ever feel like I'm coaching you anymore, right? I don't need to coach you anymore. Of course, if you ever want to talk, you know, just message me and then we could just 
schedule a call. It doesn't even have to be like official coaching. Let's just have a conversation because I remember actually before you started your job, you booked a coaching session. Yeah. I was like, why did you book a coaching session? <laughs> and you were like, I need to know what I should prepare for X, Y, Z. And I, I mean, I told you as much as I could, but it's a one hour call and we finished in 30 minutes. And I said, Hey, Joel, I got nothing for you, man. You, <laughs> this is kind of, this is kind of the whole prodigal son style where I just let you go out and figure it out on your, I'll help you get there. But once you're there, you know, you're on, it's up to you, man. It's up to you. And it seems like you're thriving more than, uh, than you thought. Yeah. Yeah. I'm doing, it's no, I'm not bragging, but I'm doing very good so far. Um, even I, I love have, it. I have done like many tickets already and pretty much it's been like, even less than a day to get my tickets done. So, and I mm -hmm. think it's because I got, I'm still in that mode, like I told you at the beginning, like in the mode to, mm -hmm. to, or like in an interview, get this and get it done right away. But I think that practice every single day, the consistency of coding and also uh, having your side projects, that is very helpful. That, I think that is what helped me a lot to get, I mean, to be doing good so far right now on my, on my job because when you're working, I mean, when you're doing like project from scratch, uh, that help you a lot. I mean, and mm -hmm. of course, and working every single day. I mean, doing doing my best and yeah. consistency and yeah. You ever think why am I? You know, do you ever think that why is Alex or Tech Rally so good at coding? It's not because I'm good at coding. It's literally something I just do every day. So <laughs> once you start doing it every day, it. It, some some things will just come naturally to you, right? Yeah. Like you're mapping over a function or you're doing a for each or when do you use that or the other? You, it's just repetitiveness that I'm just done it for almost seven years now in my life. So when people are asking me, it's like, it's so amazing that you could just automatically know what to do just by seeing it for like 10 seconds. Like it's because I've been doing it for five years. Like it takes time. It's going to take time, but you've been thriving right now and i'm just so happy for you that number one you you know you don't have to talk to me anymore i don't have to have those one-on-ones anymore <laughs> oh man you know that stress level is so high for me too just <laughs> no i'm just kidding but i'm it's always i always want to do the coaching sessions in a way where i don't have to talk to you again kind of thing where it, in a sense of like i want to see everyone succeed and if that if that happens then you know that's a win right that's a win for both of us and uh, just seeing you being able to just have that job, ironing out those tickets and, you know, messaging me less means it's a good sign. Cause that, that means you're <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I, I was, still... I, I, it was at a point that I was messaging you like every single day and I was pretty, <laughs> pretty happy. So, you know what? I'm thinking I'm bothering him so much right now, but he's still answering me and, and I really, and I'm really want to thank you, to be honest. 100 percent because uh, like i say you were like i don't know everything was like prepared for me maybe god i don't know i say you know this guy mm -hmm. has been trying to get this dream for 13 years now let me put this guy on, on his road to help him out and it was like everything i don't know everything was like fitting properly i found you yeah. you coached me i started getting interviews and now here i am working on my dream job and yeah I didn't know what to expect, honestly, from that first meeting. I didn't know that it was going to be a six month ride or a seven month ride, but I'm so glad that we went through it, you know, and it, you were a perfect person to work with. Um, just e so easy to work with because every time we talked, you're always making progress. And that made me want to work harder with you, right? It, it's if you were just telling me I didn't do this or I didn't do that, I'm like, why did you book the call then? <laughs> right? <laughs> like, that's what I would have said. But the fact that you always came in very prepared and every time you talked to me, it was always moving forward. And that's what I love. And even, you know, sometimes we did have those moments where, oh, I failed this or I failed that. And it, it, that's, we'll, we'll run into roadblocks, but I'm glad that we ran into roadblocks at least progressively going forward, not necessarily going backwards. So super proud of you, man. You much deserved. You know, like, I don't know what else to say because you're just killing it. And thank you again for staying in our, my Discord community and helping other people because uh, hopefully if you learned anything from me outside of like how to get a job, it's just like <laughs> paving it forward is really important, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Helping yeah. others is super important. So It is. Man, yeah.
So before we close out, any last words or things you want to say? or Consistency. Guys, uh, if you want to get your job, uh, treat it as a job. I mean, that is very mm. important. Treat it as a job. Uh, don't put excuses. Even myself, I got a family. I have one kid, three years old, many things to do, support my family here and also in the Dominican Republic. I got many things on my plate, but at that time, I mean, I'm still... You need to change your mindset. You need to treat uh, getting your job as your job and mm. never look back, never go back. Consistency and work hard until you get it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Joel. Thank you. I'm so uh, I, I I can't wait to see like what you're going to be. I feel like you're going to beat me as an engineer in five no, years. So, so let's let's make that a goal. So. Let's make that a goal. <laughs> no. That's my that's my coaching. Uh, that's my coaching advice for you. For <laughs> the next five years, you got to beat me. So <laughs> but anyways, thank you again for uh, just just co- giving me an hour to talk to you like this and just sharing your story. So, uh, yeah, like stay tuned for the next episode, everyone. And uh, I'll see you then. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a comment to show support. This episode will be available on YouTube and various other podcast platforms. Tech Rally out.